This is a video about the life of Stanisław Kafczak, who lived from 1892 until 1940. He was a Polish patriot, a lawyer, an author, an army officer in both World War I and World War II, as well as a Katyn Forest Massacre victim held at the camp of Starobielsk. The biographical material in this video comes from two primary sources. One is the Polish Wikipedia page about the Organizacja Wolność, or Freedom Organization of 1918, and the second is from the Polish website Pierwszy Niepodległy Stanisław Kawczak. Stanisław Kawczak was born on April 3, 1892 in Zwardon which is now part of Poland, but at the time part of Austria. He was a graduate of the junior high school in Nowy Sąc and a member of an underground student organization called Związek Jaszczemby, which translates roughly as Connection Hawks, from 1911. He was also in the Związku Walki Czynne, or the Association of Active Struggle or Active Combat. He studied at the Faculty of Law of the Jagiellonian University in Krakow from 1911 to 1913 and continued his law studies after the war and later completed a doctorate. In World War I, Stanisław Kawczak was a lieutenant in the 20th Galician Infantry Regiment. From 1917 on, he was a co-founder and member of the underground organization Wolność, known as Freedom. The Freedom Organization was an independence conspiracy in the Austrian army during the First World War. Its origins date back to the autumn of 1916, when in the ranks of the 20th Galician Infantry Regiment on the Russian front, Pantirska Pass, the beginnings of a secret organization were created among Polish officers. It developed in 1917 on the Italian front, where the 20th Galicijski Infantry Regiment was transferred. The conspirators sought to communicate with the legionnaires who, after the oath crisis and the dissolution of the Polish legions, were sent to the so-called Polish regiments on the Italian front. The organization was inspired by Lieutenant Stanisław Bergman, the ideological and formal leader of the organization in 1917-18 was Captain Jerzy Dobrodziecki. The first conspirators included Lieutenant Stefan Buchma, Josef Giza, Vladislav Karnus, Rudolf Kozuznik, Leopold Gebel, Claudius Svartsek, Jan Uriga, and Marian Wojtowicz. The leading conspirators also included Captain Julius Zivak and Lieutenant Kazimierz Duch, Stanisław Kafczak, Stanisław Mełzyk, Stanisław Plapert, and Wawriniec Typrowicz. The main achievement of the Freedom Organization was the successful military coup in the Tarnów and Sondetsky garrisons on October 30th and 31st, 1918, as well as the takeover of power on the Italian front at the hands of the Austrian command over the 20th Galician Infantry Regiment which became the first branch of the Polish army, November 3rd, 1918. And then bringing a fully armed and equipped regiment from the territory of Slovenia to Nowy Sąc in Poland, where it soon transformed into the first Podhale Rifles Regiment. Stanisław Kawczak was the commander of the military coup in Nowy Sąc on October 31, 1918, and the commander of the military militia company there. In the Polish army, he served in the 1st Podhale Rifles Regiment in Nowy Sąc from November 1918 to November 1919, including the Czech and Ukrainian fronts, and then, until 1922, as a military judge in the 4th Infantry Division. Stanisław Kawczak was a recipient of the Cross of Valor and a Medal of Independence, among other medals. He was a lawyer in Warsaw from 1926 to 1939. 
1934, his memoirs of the First World War and the immediate aftermath, titled Milnonce Eka, Spomnienia z Wojny 1914 do 1920, in English, Silent Echoes, Memories of the War of 1914 to 1920, was published in Poland. My understanding is that it went through two editions at the time. It was subsequently republished after the fall of communism in Poland in 1991. Stanisław Kawczak was also active in the community, including the Podhalin Union, of which he was the president, the Association of Freedom and Fighters for Independence and the formations of the former Austrian army, and member of the board and secretary of the Historical and Award Commission from 1937 to 1939. This is Stanisław Kafczak's World War I Austrian military ID card. These are two rings belonging to Stanisław Kafczak that stem from the World War I period. This first ring has the inscription on it Gerbitz Brigade Wormatz, which roughly translates as Mountain Brigade Forward. It has the date 1914, 1915, and on the inside, his name is engraved. This one doesn't have any inscription on the outside. However, there's a date, 1915. And on the inside, can clearly see Stanisław Kowczak. This is a picture of Stanisław Kowczak from World War I. This is a picture of Stanisław Kafczak overlooking the Dalmatian coast in the Adriatic Sea, probably taken around 1916 or 1917. This is a picture of Stanisław Kafczak in what appears to be a Polish uniform, probably taken around 1919 or 1920 when he was approximately 27 years old. This is a picture of Stanisław Kafczak in an Austrian army uniform that was taken in October 1916.
These are pictures of Stanislav Kafchak taken in the late 1930s, just before the beginning of World War II. This is a copy of the 1934 edition of Mknonce Eka by Stanislav Kafchak. This is a copy of the 1991 reprinting of Mknonce Eka by Stanislav Kafchak. Stanislav Kafchak's book is mentioned in a number of uh, book reviews and anthologies. Most notably, Professor Julian Krzyżanowski wrote this anthology of Polish literature. This is a Polish edition from 1969. This is Professor Krzyżanowski. book stems from 1969 and on page 631 in the section dealing with Pamietnik and Reportage which is uh, memoirs and reports the last paragraph here mentions Stanislav Kafchak's Meknonce Eka book Professor Krzyżanowski's 
History of Polish Literature was translated into English and published in 1978. And at page 648, there's a reference to Stanisław Kavczak's book. In this section on memoirs and reportages, Professor Krzyżanowski writes, The best of the memoirs about the war in Europe was Stanisław Kavczak's book of reminiscences, Dying Echoes, Miknonce Eka, of the heroic deeds of Jerzy Dobrodzicki, later a general, who organized the Polish soldiers on the Italian front for their future tasks in the liberated motherland. So Stanisław Kavczak's contributions included the Polish history, recording, and literature, and that's the Polish culture. This is a copy of Melchior Vankovic's book Wojna i Pióro, which means War and Pen, an overview of literature relating to military conflict. It was published in Poland in 1978. There are a couple of pages in the book dealing with uh, Meknonce Eka and the writings of Stanisław Kavchak. And in this chapter, Od Napoleona do Drugiej Wojny Światowej, which means from Napoleon to the Second World War, Stanisław Kavchak is among those authors discussed in the same company as Tolstoy, Hemingway, and Winston Churchill. In September 1939, Poland was invaded from the west by the Germans on September 1st, and from the east by the Soviets on September 17th, and World War II was underway. Stanisław Kawczak had been mobilized as a captain in the Army Reserves just before the war, and fought in the defense of Brest on the Bug River. He was taken prisoner by the Soviets. The Soviets segregated 15,000 Polish officers from the captured Polish prisoners and held them at three camps known as Kozielsk, Ostashkov, and Starobielsk. Stanisław Kawczak was held as a prisoner at the Starobielsk camp. His wife and son received correspondence from him indicating that he was at that camp. In April and May of 1940, on orders from Stalin, the NKVD murdered all of the Polish officers at three different locations. Those held at Kozielsk were murdered at Katyn. Those held at Ostashkov were murdered in Kalinin, known now as Tver, and buried at the Mednoye Forest. While those held at Starobielsk were murdered in Kharkov and buried in the woods outside of Kharkov, known as Piatchatki. At the same time, the NKVD also murdered a further 6,000 Poles who were held in prisons in what was previously Eastern Poland. The murder of the 21,000 Poles in April and May of 1940 has come to be known as the Katyn Massacre, or Katyn Affair. However, from the three camps, there was also a total of 395 officers who, instead of being killed, were transferred to the Gryazowiec camp. When the Nazis invaded the USSR in 1941, they were released from the camp and were able to join the fighting forces of the Allies in the struggle against Nazi Germany. One of the survivors from the Starobielsk and Gryazowiec camps was Adam Mozinski, who subsequently compiled lists of the officer victims of Katyn. This map shows the camp locations and execution sites of the Katyn Forest Massacre. Those held at Kozelsk were transferred past Smolensk to Katyn, where they were murdered and buried. Those from Ostashkov were taken to Kalinin and buried at Mednoye, 
Those at Starobielsk, where Stanislav Kavchak was, were murdered in Kharkov and buried in mass graves in the Piatichatki forest. This is the area of eastern Poland that was occupied by the Russians between or the Soviets between September 39 and June 41. And from these prison in these lo prisons in these locations, they were taken to various places, including Kuropati, where they were murdered in April and May of 1940. Adam Morzinski was mobilized as a reserve captain at the outbreak of World War II, just as was Stanisław Kavchak. After the Soviet invasion of Poland in September 1939, he was arrested by the Soviets and detained at the same camp as Stanisław Kavchak, namely Starobielsk. However, in 1940, in April and May, when all of the officers were being murdered, in Kharkov and buried at the mass grave in Piatichatki, Adam Morzinski was among those who was taken separately to the Gryazovets camp where he survived until 1941 and was released. He joined the Anders army and by the end of the 1940s he was a major. He was the author of this publication entitled The Cat in List, or Lista Katinska, first published in May 1949 in London by the Polish emigre publishing house Griff Publications Limited. In the introduction to the study, where he attempted to compile the list of all of the known officers who had disappeared from the three camps, he wrote that he undertook the elaboration of this cut in list as one of a negligible handful of survivors of the former prisoners of the Starobielsk camp. In this way, he wanted to pay divine providence as part of a debt of gratitude for his own salvation and at the same time give this kind of last service to all of his fellow citizens who had to sacrifice their lives in this tragic fate. After exhausting the effort of the first edition and after introducing additions, corrections, and amendments to the content, the second edition of the Cut and List was published in December 1972. A fourth edition of the publication in 1982 was published, and in 1989, for the first time, the official, it went into official circulation in Poland. He passed away in the United Kingdom in 1977. The book provides a list of all those known officers who were at the Kozielsk camp, as well as the Ostashkov camp, and finally the Starobielsk camp. At page 259 he starts the listing of those who were at Starobielsk, and at page 287. See, right here. Kafchak, Stanislav, Captain, 2000 Polish military cemeteries were formally opened at the three mass murder sites of Katyn, Mednoye, and in the Pietchatki forest outside of Kharkov. This is a picture from the internet of the memorial at the Kharkov woods where the Polish officers held at Starobielsk including Stanisław Kafczak, were murdered. The wall contains the list of all of the known victims. This is the only picture I could find on the internet, which is a close-up of a portion of that wall monument at the Kharkov Polish Military Cemetery, 
which contains inscribed on the wall the names of all of the known victims. And as I looked closely at this picture in the top right corner, you can clearly see the name Stanislav Kafcha. There are a number of videos on YouTube related to the topic of this one. The first, Pierwsze Niepodległy, Stanisław Kawczak, is in Polish. The second one, Katyn Remembered, is a documentary. Note the title, it has a missing M if you type it into the search bar. It is about the unveiling of the Katyn Monument in Toronto in September 1980, and it includes the speech of Professor Andrzej Kawczak, who is Stanisław Kawczak's son. Stanisław Kafczak's grandson also produced two videos available on YouTube about Katyn, one being a Katyn 1940 history presentation and the other one being about books on Katyn in English. Rest in peace, Grandpa. Rest in peace.